Good morning, tubers. Welcome back for another adventure. This carport has been a long time in planning and getting here and so forth. So I figured I'd spend a few minutes talking about it and telling you guys everything I've learned about the VersaTube carport. This particular beast is 24 by 26 with seven foot legs and it cost me uh, $5,800. I'm hoping with this kind of space it helps me get organized. 24 by 26 will allow me to store approximately 24 to 30 all-terrain vehicles depending on how they're put in there. So now let me tell you what I've learned. The carport showed up as two deliveries. First of all, the um, structural metal and the, um, the bolts you need to put everything together, the stakes. That was delivery number one. It was like a 1,300 pound pallet. Um, it showed up in a box truck and we actually had to hand bomb it off because the, it was uh, 12 foot long and um, there was no forklifts right it was a it was a hand truck so that was the first thing not that big a deal to unload uh, 1200 1300 pounds worth of uh, metal that went pretty pretty quickly the second delivery was the sheet metal that was a little bit more challenging the sheet metal basically shows up on a pallet that is four foot wide and 20 six feet long it came on a uh, straight truck and the guy had a moffet forklift on the back of the straight truck so picture how long that straight truck is first of all especially with the extra 10 12 feet of moffet sticking off the back so you got to get that onto your property once that's on your property around that truck the forklift needs to maneuver in my case, it was not that big a deal, but remember, there could be other loads on that truck, so they might have to be pick up, put down, rearrange to get your particular um, pallet of sheet metal off the truck, right? Not, not trivial, so make sure there's space to maneuver all that metal around. Now let's take a moment to talk about the base, right? You need level ground to put this on. I imagine if you're uh, fighting the ground that's not level, you, you can find yourself in a whole heap of trouble really fast. You need to be level the length of the rails. If you're sl slightly less than level, um, side to side, so to speak, you can slide these up and down I personally recommend just being level it just makes life so much easier these pieces slide together right there's basically uh, four sections you just slide them together on the ground right and you can see these little legs in them that you just slide the ribs into very easy, not at all difficult. You square them up, right? You measure from that corner to that corner, then that corner to this corner, and you make sure everything's square and proper and all that. So you've got the rails down, you got them level, and you stake them to the ground um, 24 feet apart in my case follow the instructions basically as you're going um, to stake them to the ground some go in fairly easily and some of them stop short so these pins are 24 uh, inches long and by the way the pins assuming you're not staking it to sand will keep the ends from moving around but about lifting them up 
they are they are not tie downs um, just picture a windstorm lifting this up and lifting it up so first the pins are tight and then they're an inch out of the ground then two inches out of the ground and then eventually a big enough gust will come up where it'll flip this thing off your <laughs> off your nice leveled um, uh, footprint and onto your car or whatever damage and by the way now what's ever inside is exposed to the full force of the wind so do take tying it down seriously the um, stakes will not hold it down they they're they're just to keep it from from moving side to side not up and down right now my carport is tied down in the on the inside right I think you guys could see these straps um, and in my area by the way 50 mile per hour winds are kind of a regular occurrence um, and from there they could go above during thunderstorms I, I don't think we've we've seen anything over a hundred but you know with micro boss bursts and all we we can get gusts that are pretty pretty nasty when we we're building the upper garage um, one happened to come through and we had just tied the whole thing down just put in cross bracing to keep it from falling over and when that wind gust came through we were very glad we did anyhow what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna dig a fair size hole right here I'm gonna bolt the chain to the wall um, put a rebar through there put the uh, chain rebar and all in a huge concrete block right here then as I landscape this down you'll have the concrete block which will be a good area and then you'll have all this dirt on top of it so I'm gonna do that four times and I'm pretty sure that'll hold it down if for any reason they're talking like hurricane type of winds I'll put my backhoe loader in here um, it weighs about 6500 and I'll strap down to um, the backhoe loader about building the ribs right they recommended building the ribs on the ground including these supports here and then slide and then just sliding them into the rails right um, in our case we didn't do it that way we started on this side put half the rib up right my buddy held that and held the top then I put this rib up right and then we just kind of slid it together and built it aerially so to speak then we installed the uh, the cross braces um, the reason why we did that is we didn't think we could successfully maneuver the whole thing um, um, we just didn't think we were going to be able to pick it up and place it and so forth even though these ribs are not huge uh, sails um, you'd be amazed when you're up on a ladder and you're trying to maneuver even pieces of metal how much the wind could be a nuisance so assuming you get all the rib ribs up and bolted together once again please follow all the instructions um, particularly these cross braces collar ties um, they're very specific about put all the bolts in right that's the pattern I show and get to you that's the pattern they want there you know get get all the braces in properly because this is what does your snow load right as you're pushing down on top right um, this is what supports your snow load 
Okay, let's talk about the sheet metal. You start on top, so it's it's ladder duty, right? So you got to be careful with that. The sheet metal on top is 26 feet in one shot. So it is quite the sale. It'll take you and three of your biggest buddies for quite the ride if the wind is nasty enough. So do beware of it. The other thing is we had to bring all this up from the driveway. And the way we did it is we used um, the straps. We um, kind of rolled it up like a carpet, brought it up here, got it up on top, right? And then released the straps so it would, um, it would lie down. Now, the very top has an overlap of um, one, one full section between high ribs, so to speak, right? So the top kind of has a backbone down it um, I, you know for the for the extra strength I guess so um, that's that's the way we did it and then after that it's just a matter of bringing each piece up and putting all those little little 5 16 self tapping bolts in if you look closely let me zoom into it um there yeah right there there's a hole that's where it slipped so um you gotta you gotta pay attention and be be careful with this when it came to putting in the 5 16 um using this particularly for the structural um, self tappers it didn't spin fast enough so you really had to lean on it for a long time we found that these you know would spin much faster we got these we got two of them from my uh, friends who don't give out coupons anymore anyway um, these spin much faster, which means the self-tapper is going in much faster. You don't have to lean on it and press and, and, you know, and be the Hulk or anything. These made the job easier, but you had to be careful with these because you could get those spins, those um, self-tappers whirling along, along fast enough where you can um, break the heads right off, right? So you want to be very careful with that. With this, you didn't have that problem, and you didn't have to fight with the cord, but you really had to lean on this thing, even when you had it on the key setting. It's just not spinning them that fast. So, once again, you got to lean and push to, to get them in. This guy set them much quicker, but you had to be careful not to break things. And also, if you were whirling along, this could come off and skid across the sheet metal, and you could lose the finish. So you have to pay attention a little bit this bit is you know actually dewalt it worked better this is some of the warrior stuff magnetic obviously um these actually started to wear for the attachment these are um they give you 500 of these so just just to give you an idea of how many of these self tappers you're going to be putting in right and there's a little i don't know you guys could see it down there right there's a little rubber um, gasket which keeps you from damaging the metal hopefully dampens the rattling and everything else we ran out of these self tappers because we were doing this double pattern Turns out this upper one isn't necessary. You just put one here, and you should do that for each each place, right? This is the pattern we we used, and it's you're gonna run out of um, self tappers if you do that. You're really supposed to only put them there, 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 right? So we put in extra ones all over the place, um, and we ran out, right? Uh, we burned off the 500 completely. So uh, I called up VersaTube, and they were very cool about it. They said you put in too many, 
and I described, you know, well, I put, you know, two, right? I put one on each side of the high rib, and, uh, and the, the uh, person said, oh, that's too many. You only need one, you know, on one side of the high rib, so to speak. So anyway, but they said, don't worry about it. We'll pop some more hardware into the mail and you should have it soon. Other things you'll see dumb little like stains on this. That's from, um, unfortunately, you know, they recommend actually storing it inside. And, you know, obviously I didn't. And from handling, it's very easy to damage. This stuff here, once again, very easy to damage. I'm really asking for trouble lying that out there because, you know, if a deer comes by and walks on it, they're good, they are going to damage it, especially like in spots like that, right? I'm going to come out and see hoof prints all over it. Um, when it comes to handling the metal, this edge, if you want to slide your hand back and forth on this edge, um, that means you want to get cut. So um, do wear gloves and do be aware that you, you could get bit and that this stuff is, um, is sharp, right? Especially some of them are a little sharper than others and they have some of them could have almost a little bit of a serrated edge so do be careful or you or you will find out the hard way how long the wait is in the emergency room so other than the anchors and the bottom piece of metal on both sides there's two pieces of sheet metal left there um, other than those two things, this is basically done. I still got to figure out what I want to do with the floor, obviously. I'm thinking I don't want to go item. I might just put one foot square blocks, which means I got to prepare the floor a little better. Um, but before I do that, I got to get the anchors in, and then I'll start thinking about the floor, whether I'm going to do an item for, then... Um, weed shield that meshy stuff and then um, sand and then you put the blocks right you got to have everything nice and level and uh, you just do it I'm thinking of renting a plate um, tamper to do that and the reason why is if you rent the plate tamper you pay by <laughs> the hour so uh, that means you're not fooling around that means you sequence yourself and you get it all done, right? Uh, if you don't, you're gonna keep fooling around with it and keep paying rent on the plate tamper. So just something that, that's in my mind. If I tamp it by hand, obviously it'll tire me out quicker and I'll, have, I'll, I'll end up fooling around with it all summer. So I am really considering a plate tamper. To build this 24 by 24, um, when the final sheets are cut and installed and so forth, uh, my buddy and I are going to have about 20 hours into this. So two guys could actually do it in a weekend. Um, we are both senior citizens at this point. I'm more of a senior citizen than he is, and he's in better shape than I am. He actually does construction for a living. I fix all-terrain vehicles on YouTube for a living. So, uh, once again, it, when it came to climbing and, and so forth, he, he was a little better at it than I was. We had to carry everything up from the garage or from the driveway area, which added some time. If we had to build this again, we, we could probably do it in 15, 16 hours, maybe even a little less, because we would just be quicker. We would, we would have the technique down with the drills, right? We wouldn't have to experiment and so forth. I think, I think we'd be quite a bit quicker. If you have three people working on this, it would be a lot quicker because you can have somebody like installing the last of the hardware to mount like the sheet metal. And um, um, while they're putting in the last uh, five sixteenths 
self-tappers. You can have two guys carrying the next panel and getting the ladders into position and going from there. Um, these ladders with the wide base worked a lot better than these ladders. This is an old magnesium ladder. What this ladder is designed to do is to set you up for a fall. I just considered that ladder dangerous and once I took my first bill from it I wouldn't go near it again. It's made out of magnesium. It's really light, really easy to walk around with. It's really a painter's ladder. It is not at all meant for this kind of work. It's much better to go with the uh, the wide base magnets. These were both uh, saved from a scrap bin because the uh, little stoppers are missing, which is good because it pokes into the mud and it keeps them stable, but um, not so good for your living room carpeting, huh? So that's more or less everything I know about building these and having these and so forth. Just another quick comments, the base, your foundation, so to speak, very important. If you're not dealing with that properly, you got a mess. So please get your base in proper order, right? That make life easier. Remember to consider the delivery, how big it is and so forth. And if you want one of these this year, you might want to get around to ordering it because there is a steel shortage. The, um, the one I ordered from the other company, um, the metal was coming from China and it never came, right? So I'm happier versus tube metal uh, comes from the United States. All this metal was made here, which is a good thing. Um, given the shortage of metal, the price of metal is going up very, very quickly. So, <laughs> um, this was, what, 5800 It might cost you more by the time you actually order it and get it delivered. It is now April, so it may take you a while. If you want one of these, you better get to it. Um, if I had to do this all over again, I would have bought a much bigger metal carport. I probably would not have built that garage. I would have just carported the whole thing. And then maybe I would have sectioned a 16 by 16, 16 by 20, 16 by 24 section out of a huge, huge carport. I would have sectioned that off and turned it into a heated, heated shop. And then the rest of the really, really huge carport I would have used for storage. Rather than having all these silly little tents and sheds floating around, I would have just had a huge carport with part of it being a shop, a heated shop, right? And uh, stop there. The shop should not be used for storage. The carport should be used for storage. And though it might not be bad to work out here during the warm, hot months, right? Nice little breeze blowing around and all that kind of stuff. During the winter, it would be nice to have a shop <laughs> that is only a shop. And uh, it's just tools. And it's big enough to work in, but small enough where you can actually heat it without too much problem. Even better, if you can heat it continuously such that when you walk in there you don't have to start a fire light a burner you, you know fire up a propane heater so that's me you know everybody could kind of do their own thing some people just work under these things um, all year round they you know tarp up the ends the best they can and they put an infrared heater you know right in the center or off in the corner near where they're working or a couple of infrared heaters and they stay warm that way y you know hey you got a budget and you do the best you can with your budget you have space and you do the best you can with whatever space you own right i hope everyone found this video helpful um VersaTube didn't give me a discount, didn't pay me to make this video or anything else. I just had a really good experience with them, so I figured I would talk about it, right? If somebody treats you well, you, you should be pleased. Not everything works perfectly these days, um, so 
when you find something that actually does work well, you you actually want to be pleased with it and say thank you and recommend it. Anyway, everyone, please keep your feet down, your heads up, and I need you all to have a really great day. And get to building whatever you're going to build. Get to doing whatever you're going to do. You don't know how much time you're going to get, so get to it, right? I wish this was done last year. I could be further along with this whole thing, but it's finally done now, and I'm going to enjoy it.